Hey everybody, welcome again to The Last Tenth. I'm Nick, and today we're gonna talk about shifting. Shifting at the wrong time could easily end up leaving time on the table, and I hear it all the time. When do I shift in this car? Well, after today, you're not gonna have to ask that question anymore. I'm gonna show you how to scientifically find the most optimal shift point to generate maximum acceleration. So, let's go. First, I'm gonna show you just how much bad shifting will cost you. In a moment, you will see two examples of me driving down the Monza Strait. In both cases, I launch the Porsche 992 Cup car in second gear and deactivate the pit limiter at the same place. I will stop the timer when the overhead advertisement just reaches the bottom of the windshield banner. The only difference between the two is that on the left side, I shift at two red lights and on the right side, I shift at three yellow lights. So let's play it through. You can see the left side reach the advertisement just before the right. The difference is almost two tenths of a second, just from shifting at the right time. I also double check the telemetry to see how long it took for both cars to travel the same distance and the result was two tenths of a second. So now that we know how costly poor shift timing could be, how do we optimize it? When a car is traveling at a certain speed, the engine speed, or RPMs, will be different depending on what gear you're using. For example, if my streetcar is traveling at 140 kilometers per hour, the engine will be running at 6,000 RPM when I'm in third gear. But if I'm in fourth gear, the engine will be running at 4,800 RPM. In order to achieve maximum acceleration, you need to use the gear that produces the most torque or thrust at that speed. In this case, for my car, it's third gear. But how do I know? So if we plot a chart of wheel torque versus vehicle's speed, we can easily see which gear will generate more acceleration. This chart is based on my street car, which has a red line of 7,800 RPM. It shows how much wheel torque is being produced at a given speed for all the gears. When the car is traveling at 140 kilometers per hour, we can easily see that the car is producing 1,500 foot-pounds of wheel torque in third gear. But if we're in fourth gear, we can see that it produces 1,200 foot-pounds of wheel torque. So in this instance, third gear produces more acceleration because it provides more wheel torque. Now, the natural question you may ask is when do we shift from third to fourth gear? If we follow the yellow third gear line towards the right, i.e. as the vehicle speed increases, we will find a point where third gear wheel torque drops below the fourth gear wheel torque. This happens at 176 kilometers per hour, and when the car is above the speed, fourth gear will be producing more wheel torque than third gear. This is shown by the green fourth gear line being above the yellow third gear line. And it is at this speed where we should shift from third to fourth, because above this speed, fourth gear achieves more acceleration. At this speed, the engine is at 7,562 RPM in third gear, which is our optimal third to fourth shift point. You might notice it is below the engine's red line, so shifting at red line is not always the best. Similarly, if we follow the fourth gear torque line, we will find that the fourth gear and fifth gear line cross at 218 kilometers per hour. At that speed, the engine is at 7,507 RPM in fourth gear, which is different from the third to fourth optimal shift point. And you should know that the different gears will have different optimal shift points. Now, I want to share another example that sim racers may appreciate. This is the chart for a 992 Cup car in iRacing, or at least what I believe to be very close to it. The first thing you'll notice is none of the lines actually cross. Well, why is that? The reason is because the engine can only rev to red line, at which point you hit the rev limiter and can't rev any higher. 
That is why these lines stop. The point furthest to the right for a given line is when the engine hits the rev limiter for that gear. You may be wondering, well, if the lines don't cross, how do we figure out what gear gives the best acceleration? Well, the principles are the same. You want to find the line with the highest torque at a given speed. At 150 kilometers, for example, the yellow line is the highest, which means third gear will give you the most acceleration. As you can see in this example, each gear produces the most acceleration right up to the end, which is when the engine hits the rev limiter. So in this car, you want to shift as close to red line as possible for every gear. It's important to point out that in these examples, we've made several assumptions. Although there will always be wheel slip during acceleration, for this exercise, we've assumed no wheel slip. Also, for simplicity, we've assumed no drivetrain loss. Generally, you'll lose 5 to 15% of your engine output as it is sent through the transmission, clutch, and differentials. But for what we're doing, it's not going to matter too much. None of this is helpful unless if you have that chart. So I'm going to show you how to calculate the numbers to create it for any car you want. To do this, you're gonna need your tire's size, the gear ratios, and the final drive. I will also post a spreadsheet in the description which will produce the chart for you after you input the data. If you're gonna use the spreadsheet, this is what it's going to look like. All you have to do is fill in all the data where the text is blue with a gray background. First, fill in the car's name so you can keep track of what it is. Next, fill out the gear ratios and final drive. Then, fill out how much torque the engine produces at each RPM interval. For example, if the engine produces 235 pound-feet of torque at 3,500 RPM, enter 235 next to 3,500 RPM. Lastly, enter the tire size of your drive wheels. In our example, this car uses slicks with size 31 slash 71 dash 18. What this means is that the tire has 310 millimeters of width, 710 millimeters in diameter, and it's meant for 18 inch rims. You just need to enter the tire width and rim size, and then adjust the profile until you get around 710 millimeters in tire diameter. For street tires, it is much easier. You just enter the width, profile, and rim size as it is given by the manufacturer. As you enter the data, the chart on the right will update on its own. Once you're done, the chart will be ready for you to use. If you want to do the math on your own, here's how. First, we need to work out what speed the vehicle will be traveling at at a given RPM, and we need to do this for each gear. To do that, we divide the RPM by the gear ratio, then by the final drive, and we multiply that by the wheel's circumference. The wheel circumference is calculated by pi times the drive wheel's diameter. How do we find the wheel diameter? To simplify this, we will make yet another assumption. Typically, when a wheel is rolling, it changes shape, and its diameter changes very, very slightly. To keep things simple, we're gonna ignore for that. It's not really gonna change your results all too much. For slick tires, it's easy. The diameter's already given to you in the tire size. For street tires, however, you're gonna need to do some math. Basically, it's the tire's width times the tire profile times two plus the rim's diameter. But make sure you're using the same units when you calculate it. My streetcar, for example, has rear tires that are 275, 40, 18. For the sim racers, you're gonna have to do some research and find the tire size of the car that you're driving. Now, back to my example, since 18 inches is 457 millimeters, my tire's diameter is 275 times 40% times two plus 457, which equals a total of 677 millimeters. Once I have my wheel diameter, I multiply it by pi to get my wheel circumference of 2,127 millimeters or 2.12 meters. Putting all that together at 6,000 RPM in third gear, which has a ratio of 1.41 and a final drive of 3.89, my streetcar will be traveling at 2,319 meters per minute, 
which actually equals 140 kilometers per hour. Now, all you got to do is repeat this for other RPMs and the other gears. After we've done that for all the gears, we need to find out how much wheel torque we get. To do that, we take the engine torque times the gear ratio times the final drive. You're going to have to find the car's torque or power curves online. So again, for my street car at 6,000 RPM in third gear, the engine is producing 273 foot-pounds of torque multiplied by a gear ratio of 1.41 and a final drive of 3.89. We arrive at 1,497 foot-pounds of torque at the wheel. Now remember, we've ignored drivetrain loss here, so in reality, we won't get that much torque. But for the purpose of finding optimal shift points, it doesn't really matter. Now, once you've done that for all the gears, you will know what speed the vehicle will be at and what wheel torque it is producing for all the gears through the RPMs. All you have to do now is chart it on a scatter plot, and voila, you have a beautiful chart you can show off to your friends. You're now equipped with the knowledge to shift like a pro, so go out there and set some lap times. If you've watched this far, you've probably enjoyed what you saw, so please like and subscribe so you'll be notified of my next video. For those who want to watch my next sim race broadcast, I'm going to put a link in the description as soon as it's made available. But in the meantime, keep sending it, and I'll see you next time.